Soon she'll see. Is everybody ready to go? It's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome fans to our week 17 Steelers preview. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio with Jay Dash. The Steelers are taking on the Cleveland Browns this week and it is a playoff game basically because you don't win, you're not in. And you also need the Bills to win. I can't believe we got a root for Rex Ryan and his love of feet. Good well, lord. See, is Johnny Manziel playing? Do you know? He, I just read an article before we came on the air that said he has concussion-like symptoms. So he hasn't, I mean, he's the starter as long as he's fine. Oh, really? Because I just heard yesterday that, I mean, he was on film drinking again. Oh, yeah, definitely. So they might just bench him because of that as well. Yeah, I mean, this concussion thing could just be an excuse in that, you know what I mean? They're doing, trying to do it quieter. And Maybe he got drunk and fell over and got a concussion. He's an idiot, so it's definitely possible. Well, I also seen that they said they don't really care if he drinks. He's 23 years old. If right. you want to go out and drink, fine, but you're always on camera doing yeah. it. Which, I mean, that sort of sucks, though, because, I mean, people can film you. What are you supposed to do sometimes? Right. You this know time, I mean? I'm pretty sure he was either at his home or a friend's home, though, so at yeah, least exactly. that's better than being out at a nightclub. If you're at somebody's home was and you're drinking... waving around $100 bills? No, I think he was just... He ha, he sings some song from Texas A&M. Maybe their fight song or something like that. And every time he starts singing it when he's drunk, somebody films him and puts it on the internet. Well, if he plays, he had a good game last Career time. Career high in yards. But, I mean, they also got blown out as well. 30-9, was that the final score? I think so, yeah. So, I mean, he can have all the yardage he wants. It's still going to be tough to win that game for him. But they did go out there last week and keep it close versus Kansas City. What, a four-point loss, 17-13? to Yeah. So, I mean, you got to go out there and still play your game. Pittsburgh lost to Baltimore, and they were supposed to beat them by 10. So, yes, you got to go out and play your game. Faux show. Still, I mean, on the other side of it... You look at Cleveland, they have three wins this season, or three and 12, and the three teams they beat were the Titans, the Ravens, and the 49ers. Three terrible teams. That doesn't mean Pittsburgh can't lose this game because we've seen them lose to a terrible team last week as well. So we'll have to see what happens, but I'd say they have a better chance with Johnny Manziel in a quarterback over Austin Davis. Yeah, and then my Terrell opinion. Pryor is the emergency quarterback, so if he comes in, we know we'll be giving up a 90-yard touchdown run. That would be ridiculous. What do you think, and I'm not saying for this game, because I, I mean, I know this is a big game or whatever, but we know Ben Roethlisberger dominates Cleveland, Mike Tomlin dominates Cleveland. I'm not saying we can't lose, you know. what? My question to you is, though, is Big Ben still a big game quarterback? I mean, it's been a long time since he's won a really big game, yeah. obviously. Super Bowl against Arizona. I mean, we lost the Super Bowl. And I know I mean, there was playoff been... games that we won in 2010 and stuff to get to the Super Bowl then. So I guess the 2010 year would probably be the last year you can say Ben's really won a big game. And I'm not blaming him or anything, so I don't That's want anybody just to jump down my too, throat. Though. I mean, there's been big regular season games Some... that he's went out and won. The Steelers are 1-3 and three this year when trailing after three quarters. Early in Ben's career, do you remember how good he was in the fourth quarter? And I love Ben. Especially I'm one his of the, rookie year. I love I, I'm one of the biggest supporters of Ben Roethlisberger. It's just a question I had to ask. Sometimes he flops in big games. Right? That's It's a little bit different. Like He'll have his big games, but you need to do it consistently four times throughout the playoffs to win that Super Bowl. And he, he flops a lot in big games as well. Showed it last week. I mean, last week was a big game. Even they though needed it, and he played it poorly. A, even though it wasn't a great team they were facing. And that's another thing with Tomlin. I, I'm pretty sure we've lost something around 13 games to sub-500 teams in the last four or five years under Mike Tomlin. That's no good. you got to step up and play hard every single week. The Panthers, and I'm not, the Steelers aren't the only ones this happens to. They lost to the Atlanta Falcons last week, and they blew them out 38 to nothing two weeks before that. So the NFL is a lot closer than what people think. Any team can win on any given Sunday. I know it sounds cliche, but you that's why you have to come into play every week. You can't be lax. It, it's just weird. People are blaming the defense for the loss last week, and it, to me it was more the offense. It was definitely more on the offense, but the defense definitely has to step it up as well. They didn't have that great of a game, and I mean, if... Johnny Manziel's in. He he doesn't have many weapons out there. Gary Barnage has had a good season. He has a 110 targets, 71 receptions for 977 yards. So Pittsburgh, they have somewhat of a tough time stopping the tight end this season. They've been a little bit better as of late just because the receivers have been blown up more often. But Gary Barnage just needs 23 yards for his first 1,000-yard season. Travis Benjamin has really fell off. 
here late in the season as well. Brian Hartline has done a couple things. Duke Johnson's really the guy out there, I think, is their best weapon, and they really don't use him enough, in my opinion. I mean, Isaiah Crawwell, he has his big games, and he's the guy they feature in the run game, but Duke Johnson is that, that playmaker to me, and they, really, they get him like three, four touches a game, it seems like. They really need to get this guy more involved, because outside of Gary Barnage, I mean, they don't have much going on. With Johnny Manziel at quarterback, I mean, that is their best option, which is crazy to say, so they don't have much going on out there. But neither did Baltimore last week. So this defense really got to stay focused and go out there and stop these receivers, even though there's not big names. Because Kamar Aiken was the biggest name you've seen last week. The one thing that makes me feel a little better is Pittsburgh's dominance over Cleveland as of late, you know, in the last week 17, 10 years or whatever. Cleveland. Yeah. And now Pittsburgh Baltimore games are always close. I mean, it really doesn't matter. One team could be so much better than the other and somehow they're always close. So that gives me a little bit of confidence coming into this game. You can say that, but you go back and look last season they played Baltimore and totally blew them out there in the middle of the season, you remember? Yeah. Big Ben, that was one of Big Ben's 500 yard games or one of oh, the six touchdown games but or i mean if you look over history i understand consistently way more the steelers ravens games are close yeah i mean i really don't expect this game to be close but i didn't last week either and this team really let us down so it's really hard to be high on them going into this game no matter how bad the competition looks what's the biggest contributor to the steelers nine and six record is it struggles on offense at different points of the year some struggles on defense or because we lost too many players to injury i think i can factor down to coaching and the kicker earlier in this season if we would have had a kicker all season long you would have came out with at least one more win in that baltimore game and if you'd have had better coaching you'd have won that game as well in last week i think you'd have won with better coaching i put it on well i'm gonna say Definitely Mike Tomlin deserves some blame, but I think if he got a better offensive coordinator in there, this offense would be more consistent because we say it time and time again, they have the players to be an elite offense. They're just not an elite offense, and I believe in Big Ben, so who who else am I going to blame? Right. It has to be Todd Haley. I mean, I believe this offense is a 30-point-per-game offense with the right offensive coordinator, so I'm putting the blame on Haley for the offensive struggles, and if they'd have just had a kicker. I agree about Haley and the offense because everybody quick to say we're scoring a lot of points, we're putting up yards, you know, one of the best offenses we've ever had. But look, man, the Steelers have 71 plays of 20 plus yards. That's fourth in the NFL this year. The offense is scored on 40.7% of their drives and they have the fourth lowest three and out percentage at 16.4. But they can't get consistency in the offense as far as they need the big plays even if those big plays weren't there ridiculous if those big plays weren't there our offense would probably be averaging 20 points a game if that if if they don't hit those big plays which they couldn't get last week in baltimore martavis bryant had a drop drop wheaton had a drop ben had a bad pass to brown he threw it too far inside and brown couldn't get it you know keep his shoulder squared so the steelers offense is very inconsistent if it can't hit big plays, and that's on Haley because the talent's there. Ben's an accurate enough passer to run an offense similar up to up in New England where you give a lot of underneath routes and let your wide receivers take the ball to the house. You don't need to throw the ball 50 yards downfield for Brown to score a touchdown or Bryant to score a touchdown. Sometimes you can get them the ball, and I'm not saying the wide receiver screen game. I'm not, I'm not talking like that again, like early in the year and early last year. But slants, ends, you don't always have to go for the big plays. And if the Steelers can't hit them big plays, they're screwed. And if the defense doesn't make turnovers at midfield, you're screwed as well. This team is just not the, the elite offense that I hoped it would be. They have the elite players. It's just, I mean, I like what their offensive line has done this season. I, obviously, I like the quarterback. I like the running back, even though it's not the starting running back. Right. The receivers, I can't be happier with pretty much the one and two. Now, Wheaton came on as the number three, so I'm happy with him as well. Heath Miller is obviously our guy. What can you be mad at? You can't point at one thing on this offense, so it has to be Todd Haley. Do you think the Steelers have two more victories if Ben Roethlisberger played in those four games he missed? If he plays all 16 games, and I, I know it's hindsight, it's easy, it's just a question. I think we're an 11-win team already if Ben Roethlisberger played all year long. I mean, you would think so. I thought with 
Michael Vick in a quarterback versus Baltimore, and Pittsburgh should have won that game still with him in. I said Big Ben, if he was in, that blew them out. Yeah, because he and, does play much better at home, too. So I know he did play terrible this week. You know what I mean? So you yeah. can say he would have played terrible before, but Ben usually plays good at home. So that game, I really think, would have been different. But you never really do know. So right. who knows at this point? But that's why when everybody's so down on the team this year, so many fans are hating, like, we have overcome a lot, this team. So to be where we are is still pretty impressive to me. I mean, if you go out and win this game and go 10-6, and six, you can never be upset with a 10-6 and six season. Sometimes it just doesn't work out where you don't make the playoffs. Right. Nothing you can do about it. And now the defense, to me, is really on the cusp of becoming a great defense. And we kind of talked about it a little bit before the preseason got together, and maybe a little bit at the beginning. And I panicked after the preseason and after the New England game, but they've really squared it away. They're second in rushing TDs allowed this year with six, and second in rushing first downs with only 66 allowed. They're sixth in rushing yards allowed per game with 91.5, second in red zone takeaways with six. Fourth in sacks. They have 41 sacks this year. That's the most since the 2010 season. They're seventh in the league in interceptions with 15. But the problem is the passing yardage allowed, total yardage allowed, which mostly comes from the passing yards because they do really good against the run, and the third down struggles. The Steelers give up 41% of third downs on defense. That's 22nd in the NFL. So if you can point to one thing that the defense really needs to try to do better, they need to... I don't want to say press the receivers because I'm not going to say I'm a defensive coordinator. Figure out a way to keep the ball from getting through the air so much. I know there's a lot of garbage time points, but let's face it. Tomlin made his impact in the league as a defensive backs coach. That's what he was in Minnesota when we hired him. Or he might have been the coordinator by then, but he started as a defensive backs coach. He should be able to get this figured out. And they need to be able to stop him on third down. Because if they can get off the field more often, you can give the offense more chances. The Steelers didn't even have 60 total plays on offense last week. So that made the turnover stand out even more because we didn't have any chance to overcome them. And it also made the bad play call at the beginning going forward on fourth down harder to overcome. So when defenses can control, or when other teams can control the ball and keep us off the field, it's going to be tough. We need to get turnovers to get our offense back on the field. Well, you can see it. What's our strength right now defensively? Red zone defense. <laughs> well, no, I mean, which part of our oh, defense? The, we always stop the run game. Yes, yeah, and that's our linebackers and our pretty much our front seven. Front correct? seven, believe it. So our flaw is our defensive backs, obviously. Yeah. What do we draft high? Linebacker. Linebackers, back. exactly. But we did take a defensive back in the second round. He just got hurt. Yeah, so I really think it's time that they start investing some higher picks or just put more weight on the cornerback position. I know the way they play, you can get it done without the cornerback, but, I mean, you have to bring in a good corner at this point. You've been getting burnt in the passing game over the past two seasons, and you've done nothing but bring in Brandon Boykin to fix it, pretty much. I know you said they drafted a guy in the second round and he got hurt. We don't know what he'd have done this season either. you got to start investing some more picks in the secondary, for sure. At least in the top three rounds. I know it's hard to reach sometimes. First-round corners are Well, look at Marcus Peters this season. That was a guy that we were talking about maybe going to the Steelers. Yeah. And a lot of people saying, oh, they He's don't want him. He year. has character issues or whatnot. I don't care. This guy was a beast. Now, they couldn't have had him because he got drafted before their pick. But... That's the kind of guy you need. Yeah. And it depends on how their defense wants to go next year into a 4-3 or a 3-4. However, Keith Butler and Mike Tomlin want to do it. We'll see is in what type of defensive backs they get. Either they're going to be cover two or they're going to be guys who can lock you down in man coverage. doesn't matter what cornerbacks you have. You should be able to beat Johnny Manziel. Well, you should be able to cover these receivers too. Like I said, Travis Benjamin, Brian Hartline, Andrew Hawkins, Taylor Gabriel. They do have Dwayne Bow. They don't even activate him most weeks, <laughs> He's though. garbage. Yeah, that guy is garbage. He's been garbage for years now out there with Kansas City or whatnot. But they have no receivers. So if you cannot stop these receivers, then really you don't deserve to be in the playoffs because you're going to get blown up by the Tom Brady's and the Ryan Fitzpatrick's, really. And, you know, Cleveland gives up the most yards on the ground in the NFL, somewhere around 135 yards per game. You should be able to run D'Angelo, control the ball, control the clock. And I'm not saying run it 35 times, but you should be able to run it 20 to 25 times, control the ball, keep your offense out there, limit the turnovers, and make it a pretty easy victory. I tell you what, though, Cleveland 
was the worst defense against the run for pretty much the first two-thirds of the season. And here at the, the last third of the season, they have been a little bit better. You've seen it last week. You wanted to play Charkandrick West real bad because you've seen he was going up against Cleveland, and he didn't have the biggest game. They've actually been doing a good job at sh not, not necessarily shutting down the run, but at least keeping it at bay to, to give their team a chance to win. Earlier in the season, I mean, they weren't stopping the run at all, and you can't win if you can't stop the run. Now they're, like I said last week, they stayed in that Kansas City game because they were able to shut down the run a little bit. But I still believe with the offense that Pittsburgh has, they'll be able to run. I mean, they showed it last week. They were able to run at least early in that game against one of the best run defenses in Baltimore. So I, I think D'Angelo Williams should be able to go out there and put up over 100 yards and be more consistent in this game, not just early in the game and then shut him down. He needs 101 yard to get to his third 1,000 yard season. I think it's his third. Not bad. Especially since he didn't play the full season. It's yeah. still tough to get a thousand yards. I know a lot of people think that in today's NFL, if you don't have 1,500 yards rushing, you're garbage. But it's not necessarily true. It's more of a passing game these days. And let's not forget, there's a lot of more running backs getting play these days, yeah. too. It's not just a starting running back and that's it. Although with the Pittsburgh Steelers, it pretty much is. It's been one running back and that's it. But it's still a, a pretty big feat to get a thousand yards on the ground, in my opinion. I could do it on Madden. But I mean, looking at this game, man, what does Pittsburgh have to do, really? My key to victory? No, not necessarily your key to victory. Just don't turn the ball over. I man. think, yeah. I mean, it has to come down to just Big Ben playing a better game, doesn't it? Just control the ball. When he threw that pick in Denver, not in Denver, against Denver, uh, Kevin Colbert told Ben, don't change the way you play ever. Uh, I don't know if I 100% agree with that statement. I like the chances he takes, but sometimes he doesn't take them at the right time. Obviously not. He's made a lot of mistakes here recently. What does he have, 15, 14 picks this year in only 11 games? That's not good. No, it isn't. He's not usually like that, though. I mean, this has really been the first season, maybe ever, that he's thrown this many picks, it seems I think like. the year of the appendectomy in the motorcycle Oh, uh, yeah, accident. I remember that year. Yeah, that was a bad year, too. <laughs> You're right. But yeah, I think this offense will be fine this week as long as Big Ben takes a little bit more care of the ball. That's it. If he doesn't throw a pick, we win the football game. And defensively, I think you should be able to shut the run down. I know they didn't shut it down as good as I hoped last week, but I think this run game's even worse. I do like Duke Johnson, but they don't use him in the run game. He's more of the passing back. So I think they'll be able to stop the run. It's all about how they do against Johnny Manziel if he's the guy that goes. Because against the running quarterbacks I guess you want to say they really have let up big games even though they blew out Colin Kaepernick in the 49ers and they blew out Johnny Manziel in the Browns Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson had a huge us. game against them so they really don't do too great against these running quarterbacks so far this season so I'd like to see them maybe try to keep them in the pocket a little bit more and make them throw make Johnny Manziel throw a bunch out of the potential three teams that could be the three seed Cincinnati Denver New England who's the one you want to least who's the one you least want to go to I don't want to play New England obviously right away I mean I guess it'd be nice to get it out of the way if you can go in and win that game but I don't want to play New England obviously I, I'd say Cincinnati's the one I do want to go play they always smoke Cincinnati in the playoffs no quarterback for Cincinnati they're still a freaking nine and a half point favorite and their backup quarterback's gonna play hurt ridiculous yeah, but I mean, he'll he somehow cover because I picked against him. Yeah, he covered what two weeks ago somehow. He wasn't hurt then, loser. What's your key to victory? My key to victory is don't shit the bed like you did last week. That's pretty much it. That's I all mean, you got to do to beat can this you say? Team. It should be the same thing. I mean, the Steelers, just like they, when you compare them to the Ravens, I mean, every facet of the game they should have won. And they didn't do it. So it's the same thing this week. Every facet of the game, the Pittsburgh Steelers are just better right now. I mean, even Joe Hayden, I think he was placed on the IR a few weeks ago. He's done for the season. That's pretty much their best corner. They have nothing going on out there. Just take care of the ball, Ben. And better coaching. Come on, Todd Haley. Go up and put 50 points on this freaking team. Ridiculous. I want to see him run the ball with... I don't want to say... A th I don't want to see a power running game. I want to see him just run the ball with authority control the clock and put up more than 20 points they're eight and three when they score 20 points or more 
The Browns are giving up 26.9 points per game. They're giving up the most rushing yards in the league per game at 135. And I know you're saying they're playing a little better, and they are playing better against the run. But I think our offensive line should really be able to just take over this game. They don't get many sacks either. I don't even think the Browns have 30 sacks on the season. So do not let them get to Big Ben. Just control the game in an old school fashion and they'll still be able to put up 30 or 40 points because I think the Browns are that bad. As long as you don't turn the ball over and give the offense the chance, they're going to put points on the board. Get a turnover to defense, please. Yeah, I think they'll be able to get to the quarterback though this week. Steelers? Yes. Yeah, I hope so. Especially if it's not Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel can move around a little bit. If it's Austin Davis, I think they'll blow that dude up. Didn't we say before the year started we thought they'd be in the top 10 at least in sacks by the end of the year, Pittsburgh? Uh, you might have said it. I don't know. I can't remember. Fourth in the league this year. Not bad. Solid. Now if we can get a defensive back that learned how to tackle or cover, we'd be good. Yeah. you got to spend some money on one, though, or draft one high. It's one or the other. You can't just keep trying to get these fifth rounders to work out for you. Hope Golson makes an impact next year when he's healthy. Yeah. Final prediction here, man. I think Pittsburgh comes out, scores early, scores often. I think Manziel kind of implodes. He's garbage. I'm pretty sure they haven't even scored. What did they score last week? 14, I think yeah. it was. Or 13, 17, 13. I, I don't think even think they've scores. scored 20 points in like their last four starts with him at quarterback. They're just, he's not a great quarterback. They're not a good team. Pittsburgh is so, so much better than these guys. I think the Steelers come out and put up 30 again and hold them to, I'd say, less than 12 points. So I'm going to go Pittsburgh 35-10. I think you're right about the offense. They're going to go out and score more than 30 points in this game. They better do it. Or I'm, I think we're going to get I'm a defensive with touchdown too. But yeah, I'm, I'll say around 34 points out of the Steelers. But you're right. Over the past two weeks, 13 points or less out of this Cleveland Browns offense. But it was at the Seahawks and at the Chiefs. Two pretty good defenses. I'll say they do a little bit better than that and put up 16 points in this game. So 34-16 Pittsburgh. My Pretty cra- easy win. Crazy prediction of the week. Ryan Shazier takes a pick 70 yards back to the house. I'll take it. He's going to run right through Johnny Manziel. Manziel's going to try to tackle him. Shazier's going to lower the boom. He's going to hurt Manziel, and then people will stop calling Shazier injury prone. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's going to get people to stop calling him injury prone. Then. Oh, when you run through somebody and score a touchdown, then that just means you're the bus. But that's all we got, fans. Unfortunately, this may be the last Steelers preview show we do of the season. Hopefully they win so that we can do a playoff preview because I get really excited when we do that and I start yelling, waving the towel in studio and playing the polka song. You will hear the polka song next week if we make it to the playoffs. Believe it. How about this? What about the New York Jets at Buffalo Bills real quick? What, what are Bills. you looking at that in that game? Bills. No, we want the Buffalo Bills Tyron to win. Taylor, Buffalo baby. Bills have to win, and Pittsburgh has to win for Pittsburgh to get in the playoffs. But the New York Jets are on a five-game win on streak right now. Ryan Fitzpatrick playing some very good football with Bilal Powell back. They've been doing nothing but winning. So their offense looks really good right now, especially with Brandon Marshall out there. They brought him over this season. He's had a great season. Eric Decker stepped it up this season. Those two are a great one-two combo for Fitzpatrick and Chris Ivory running the ball well. I think the New York Jets are a better team than Buffalo. But in Buffalo, Buffalo went out there and beat them last time around in New York. And you know that Rex Ryan wants to go out and beat his former team. So... I don't know. I think Buffalo has a real shot in this game. LaShawn McCoy, he, it looks like he's not going to play in the game. But they, that Carlos Williams and Gillisley, whatever his name is, they've been running the ball well out there. So Tyrod Taylor's been playing some pretty decent football recently as well. Now, they haven't been win, winning many games, but they did win last week. I think Buffalo has a shot to win this game. And I do believe in my heart that Buffalo is going to go out and win that game. Rex Ryan wants to finish 8-8, eight and because eight, if they go 7-9, and nine, that means the Bills are worse than they were last year, and he doesn't want that to happen. He also wants to beat his former team. He also wants to keep his former team out of the playoffs. Ryan Fitzpatrick's never made the playoffs. Tyrod Taylor has a cooler nickname than Ryan Fitzpatrick, even though I hate both of them. So, that means the Bills are going to win, and the Steelers are going to eke into the playoffs, although I hate having to do that, but you've got to keep the faith. If you're a Steeler fan, you just want it to happen. I don't know, but that's a 1 o'clock game as well, so we will know by 4 o'clock what is going on. Mm, we're going to have Red Zone, the Steeler game, and freaking Sunday ticket on at the UC Cabana. Get money. 
Anything else for the fans? Not that I can think of. Man, if we don't make the playoffs, is it still a good year? I mean, 10 wins. You can't argue with 10 wins, but the way they lost to the Ravens, I mean, in the end, no, because you want your... The Steelers are a team that if you don't win championships, you're upset with them. If you don't know, now you know. Steelers. Well, that's it, fans. Hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube. Click and subscribe. Click thumbs up. Comment, here we go, Steelers. Wave those towels and play that polka song because we need it.